Okay, hello everyone. Thanks so much for joining us for this afternoon's live Metastock event. Uh, if you haven't heard of Metastock, we are purveyors of software and analysis marketing uh, data for active and I'm sorry, I'm being distracted by what's going on over the screen. Okay, we were having a little bit of an issue getting things going, so I apologize for that, but it looks like we got it going now. Anyway, my name is Greg Lewis. I'm the marketing manager for Metastock. Um, we really appreciate you showing up today. Uh, we have a live event today with one Kevin Nelson. Kevin Nelson is very dear to our hearts here at Metastock because he was the sales manager here for many years until about uh, eight years ago, I think, 10 years ago. And now he runs his own business teaching Metastock. And he is absolutely the world expert on Metastock and a great person to go to. And today he's going to be talking about how to use the super indicator. And I know it's going to be a really interesting discussion. So you definitely want to pay attention to that. Uh, I'm going to try and run a really quick video to make sure, well, I'm making sure that things are over here on this end. So if you haven't heard of Metastock, here you go. Hi there. Greg Lewis, Metastock Software. As the marketing director, I get asked all the time, what is Metastock? How can I help my trades? Well, stick around for about three minutes and I'll tell you. Metastock is an award-winning software and data package that has been helping traders for over 35 years. Simply put, Metastock is a tool for traders like you to analyze the markets. Metastock helps you take the guesswork out of trading by offering a methodical, systematic approach to some key questions all traders come up against. Questions like, how do I decide which securities to trade when there are literally thousands to choose from? Which strategy should I use and how do I test that strategy before spending my first trading dollar? When should I enter and exit a trade? How can I effectively manage the securities I'm interested in? And of course, how do I know where prices will go next? At the core of Metastock are the power tools. The power tools give professional grade analysis tools to private traders like you and me. You can scan the market with the Metastock Explorer to filter and sort securities that show buy and sell signals based on your criteria. The Metastock System Tester lets you test most strategies through a process called backtesting which allows you to see how your strategy would have performed over time. You can easily manage and monitor the securities you are interested in with Quote Center. Quote Center lets you sort on a variety of criteria to view the data that's important to you. Then just double click on a security if you want to see its chart. With the Metastock Forecaster, you can even take advantage of patented technology to view probable future prices. If you're an options trader, you're going to love Metastock's OptionScope. OptionScope puts all the critical info at your fingertips, displaying sortable, customizable, color-coded options data, including the Greeks. And Metastock has solutions for traders of all levels and interests. If you're just getting into trading, you will appreciate the education offered by our many built-in systems. In addition to pointing out buy and sell signals, Metastock explains how they work in an easy to follow commentary window. Metastock has built in systems based on popular strategies like MACD, Bollinger Bands, Turtle Trading, Candlesticks, and many more. Metastock even has the very popular and exclusive Rahul Mohindar Oscillator System, or simply known as the RMO. And as you become a more experienced trader, Metastock grows with you. Advanced analysts will enjoy the comprehensive list of trading systems and indicators. Okay, I'm going to break in there. Uh, just to let you know, we're going to be starting here in about 30 seconds. It looks like Jeff is ready to go. It looks like Kevin Nelson is ready to go. Jeff is coming at you from uh, Salt Lake City. Uh, Kevin is coming at you from a very nice little town. He lives in Ormond, Florida, which I have to say I really, I really enjoy. I've visited his place before. Uh, so if you have any questions make sure you ask them and chat them in hero we're starting in five seconds uh, make sure to like and subscribe and thanks so much for joining us
All right. Hello, everybody. I'm Jeff Gibby. I hope you're doing well. I'm in a good mood. I've got a lot of caffeine in me. So it's good to see you. Thank you for coming. If you are watching this on YouTube, I have just a special ask for you. Uh, we're trying to get to 70,000 users. So if you haven't subscribed to the channel now, do it. It helps a great deal. We do appreciate it. And um, uh, and also like this, like this stream. So with that being said, I promise it's going to be a good one. Let's go ahead and get going. Um, promise, not a promise. Let me read the legal disclaimer. So, today's demonstration is designed to instruct you on using Metastock and the accompanying software plugins. It's not a recommendation to buy or sell, but rather guidelines to interpreting and using specific indicators and features within the software. The information software and techniques presented today should only be used by investors who are aware of the risk inherent in trading. Metastock and its employees shall have no liability for any investment decisions based on the use of the software any trading strategies or any information provided in connection with the company. Metastock and its employees do not endorse the purchase of any security, nor is it paid for the promotion of any security. No information contained in this presentation should be construed as investment advice or a solicitation to buy a security. So hope you enjoy that. Today we're going to talk about the super trend indicator and uh, Kevin Nelson, actually my first boss here at Metastock, the person that hired me is gonna kind of lead the discussion and kind of talk about it. So Kevin has a lot of experience with Metastock. I'm just gonna kind of uh, kind of talk to you a little bit about uh, him. When I started here at Metastock, he was a sales manager and he did that for a number of years. Uh, now he runs a company that's called Learn Metastock. And really the sole focus of that site is to help people trade better using Metastock and he does a really, really good job with it. Some of the things, he'll talk about some of the things that he does, but one of the things that I really like is when he goes and kind of does an indicator lesson, much like what we're gonna do today, talks about a little uh, about an indicator and kind of provides Metastock code for it and all that kind of stuff is stuff that he does on a very, very regular basis as part, as, as part of what he does for them Metastock.com. So without further ado, Let's go ahead and bring you on here. Kevin, how are you doing? I'm doing great. Thanks for that introduction, Jeff. I appreciate it. I tried to make it a little bit different this time. So <laughs> <laughs> hopefully it was okay. Let me go ahead and put no, the it's presentation. All good. It's all good. Yeah. yeah. So let me go ahead and share my screen and let me know when you can see my website. Uh, yeah. Is that a newly redesigned Learn We have a newly redesigned website. That's very true. Very, very good eye, Jeff. Very good eye. Um, but thank you. It's all you. Okay, perfect. Well, thanks again, Jeff. I appreciate it. Um, just to give you a quick background on myself. I started with Metasoc back in the early 90s, back in 92. And then in 2008, I left to start this company called LearnMetasoc.com, where we just help people with their program. And just literally about anything that you want having to do with Metasoc, you know, that's what we're here for. And we provide the training on it. And so this is our website up at learnmetastock.com. And what I'll do is at the end of today's presentation, I'll just give you a quick kind of run through of the site there. All right. So what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be doing a presentation on an indicator called the Super Trend Indicator. Now, when I do classes or training, uh, I'm always looking for input from our customers on different things that they'd like to see or, you know, be trained on. And this is one that actually came from a customer who read about this particular indicator, maybe saw it up on YouTube, I don't know, but uh, approached me and said, hey, let's take a look at this indicator. And I, and I did, of course, it looked really interesting. And it looked like it'd be a really good subject for the Metasoc crowd there. So <clears throat> what I did after doing some research and so forth, you know, I put together a program. And this is one of the things that we do at Learn Metasoc is we'll take trading ideas or strategies from whatever public source and then show you how to duplicate it inside of Metastock. So anyway, so if you're a customer or you have ideas for us to train on, please send them over because that's exactly what we need there. I really appreciate it. So what we're going to be doing today, again, like I say, we're going to be talking about this super trend indicator. And what this indicator is, is it's a trend following type of indicator. So uh, we probably have a pretty varied group of uh, people inside of our webinar today, anywhere from just kind of getting started to, I'm sure, some really advanced users as well. But long story short <clears throat> is that when working with trend following indicators, 
trend following indicators do very well when the things are trending and the their weaknesses is that when things are aren't trending or basically moving sideways or getting whipsawed that's where trend following indicators you know have trouble so this of course is basically the exact same thing it has the same strengths and same weaknesses but there's a number of advantages of this particular one that you'll see here in a minute and one of them is is that it's incredibly easy to interpret i'm going to show you a chart i'm going to plot the indicator and literally within you know a minute or so you're going to understand exactly how to interpret this thing and one of the other nice things about it too is that it automatically adjusts for volatility one of the indicators that's included with the formulas here is an ATR or what's called an average true range. And the average true range will vary depending on the volatility of the security. So this is one of the indicators that are built into it. So with that indicator built in, it actually automatically adjusts for the volatility when things get extremely volatile or less volatile and so forth. And this formula is another really nice thing about this too is, is it's super customizable. So if you want to make changes to it, if you want to speed it up, slow it down, whatever the case may be, you know, you can do whatever you like. And then there's also quite a bit of training available for it. So if you go out and do some searches on it, you'll see what I'm talking about. There's a ton of videos, uh, quite a bit of training available for it, you know, through the websites and so forth. So again, just a pretty popular indicator. And again, like I say, I thought it was just a really good fit for the Metasoc program. Now, one thing we're going to be doing today that's a little different than, well, actually different than any other uh, Metasoc webinar that I've done so far. And that is, I'm going to go ahead and give everybody who wants it, I'm going to give you the formulas that I've created for this particular class here. And the class and the indicators that I created, I created an indicator for the super trend indicator, I created an expert advisor, two system tests, and an exploration. And that's what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through how to use those today. And if you're interested in receiving a copy of these formulas, just send me an email at the end of the presentation today. Tell me you were in the webinar and I'll be happy to, to, to uh, get you those formulas. All right, so let me show you how this thing works. Let's jump over here to a Metasoc chart. And in this chart here, I've just got a chart here, the SPY, the symbols SPY. And when you install the formulas from our website or the ones that I'll send to you here, all my formulas all begin with LMS. So what you'll want to do is you'll scroll down through your list of indicators here and look for the group of indicators that start with LMS and then look for the indicator called the super trend indicator and drag it directly on top of your price bars. Now, when it plots or basically is going to plot, it's going to ask you for a couple different things. It's going to ask you for the number of periods that you want to use in the average true range and then also the multiplier for the ATR as well. So we'll start off with just the basics or the default parameters, which are seven and three. Click OK, and this will plot our indicator. Now, what's important here is we want to make sure and merge it with the price scale over here on the right hand side, because this indicator is designed to plot based on the prices of the security itself. So make sure that you merge it with a scale. So if you have your scale on the left hand side, of course, merge it with that side. But it's important that it merges with the prices in order for it to read correctly. So the indicator is extremely easy to, to understand, as I was saying before. And literally, all you're doing is literally looking at the prices in relation to this line. And that is, if the prices close above the line, you're looking to be bullish. If the prices close below the line, you're looking to be bearish. That's it. This is the indicator, and that's the whole strategy there. So the the idea here with this indicator, again, like I say, it's a trend following indicator. And as I was saying before, it works really well when you're in a trend like you are right here. And when you're when it kind of gets choppy like this, this is where any type of trend following indicator has a problem, right? Because it starts to move down, then it moves up, moves back down, and you kind of get caught in that that sideways channel. But the point being is again, like I say, when things trend, an indicator like this works really, really well. So these are just the default parameters that I have here on the chart. And this is, again, is just using the standard 7-3 uh, combination, meaning that it's a multiplier of 3 and the length is 7. Now, if you want to change it, what you can do is you can double click on it and then you can change it to anything you want. So now, in order to kind of help figure out really how to use this, I created, again, like say, a number of different tools, including a couple system tests. So that's what I want to do next 
is after kind of plotting this on the chart, I want to see, you know, how good or how bad of a trading idea this really is. Because one of the real um, weaknesses for most people, I should say, is that we have a very subjective view of things typically. And to really be a good trader and make good money in the markets, we need to be as objective as possible. And one of the tools that will really help you do something like that is a system tester inside of Metastock. Because in the system tester, you can put in a set of you put in a set of rules, and you tell us specifically where you want to buy it, where you want to sell it, and then based off those rules, it comes back and tells you what happened, whether you like it or not. Because it's only kind of human nature. A lot of times, we'll overlook some of the bad signals, and we'll just kind of really zero in on some of the good trade and say, "Man, I would have made so much money here. You know, this would have been great, and so forth." But a lot of times, you run in the system tester, and it doesn't work out so well. So again, it's a really powerful tool, and I'd highly recommend that you learn how to use this tool. So I'm going to go ahead and open up the system tester. I just click on the green dollar sign up here at the very top. And when again, when you install my formulas here, they're all going to begin with LMS for Learn Metastock, and they'll be grouped together. Now, the one that I want to show you here, I've got two different system tests here for you. I've got the Super Trend system test, and also have another one called the system test with OPT or for with optimization. And that's what we're going to take a look at here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and select this, and I'm going to open this up. Now, the reason why I want to do this is what optimization allows you to do is it allows you to test a range of data. For example, let's, you know, in this situation here, I'm using a combination of seven and three for the indicator itself, right? But the question is, is that the best combination to use? So what optimization allows us to do, it allows you to say, hey, instead of just using seven periods, let's go ahead and test a range of data for that. And instead of just three for the multiplier, let's test a range of data for that. And let's go and sort, be able to sort through that data, kind of figure out which one we might want to use. And that's what optimization allows you to do. So the formula for the buy order here, you can see that I've got a number, I've got a formula here that says deviate, then ATR periods and so forth. The OPT1 is going to represent the the one per, the multiple the multiplier and the OPT2 is going to represent the length. Now, how this is defined is that you're going to click on this optimizations tab and this is going to be spelled out here for you. And you'll see that OPT1 represents a multiplier and OPT2 represents a length. Now, for the multiplier, instead of just using a parameter of three periods, what we're going to do here is we're going to run a test that's going to test anywhere from one to 10 periods in steps of one, meaning it's going to test a one period multiplier, two, three, four, all the way up to 10. And then for the length of the ATR, we're going to test anywhere from two to 40 in steps of two. Now, You'll, if you look down here at the very bottom, you'll see that this is going to run through a combination of 200 different system tests. So it's going to take all these different combinations and run, run through them. So let's go ahead and get this thing started, and I'll kind of walk you through this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and select that system test with optimization. Up here at the very top, I'm going to enter in the symbol of SPY, so SPY for our symbol. We're going to test it going long only using the last 1250 records, which is about five years of time. We're gonna test it on daily data. And for the trade options here, what I'm gonna do is I'll click on this account. And what I've got chosen here is I'm gonna run a points only test. So this is gonna test just a, a raw number of points that were gained or lost. And I'll come back to this here in just a minute. I wanna kind of get this going, but by choosing a points only test, that also takes out of the equation any type of interest rates and or margin too. So really kind of simplifies things. I've got zero set up for my commissions. And for the trade execution here, you'll see that I've got everything set to trade at the opening with a one period delay. All right. And then down here, I'm going to go ahead and bump this number up if I can. I don't think it'll go to 200, but I'm going to bump that up to, to 200. But what this says, it's going to keep the most profitable results for each optimized system. I'm going to go ahead and get this thing run in here. So I'll click on Start System Test. So this is actually, if you look down here in the lower right-hand corner, this is going to run through 200 different combinations here of those, of those parameters for this indicator. Now, 
I want to step back here for just a second, talk about this points only test. The way that I set this up is I said that I just want to run a raw number of points, or that's what I want to see in my system test. So the idea is, is that if a system test comes back and the price of the security went up, say, $10, and that was the only trade that it took, a points only system test result would just show a number of 10 points. So it, on the other side of the coin, when you run a system test, you can also tell it to test on dollar figures too. And you've got a number of different combinations there that you can choose. But when I'm typically trying to test a trading strategy, what I want to do is I want to keep it as simple as possible. And so I can very quickly just kind of uh, compare system results against each other just to determine you know, if one is better or worse than the other. And then once I really zero in on something, then I can, of course, go back and then put in dollar figures and see how it works that way. So, but anyway, there's pros and cons to all this kind of thing. But, uh, you know, if you need help with that, that's, that's of course, the kind of things that we, that we can, of course, help you with there. So now to take a look at the results, just click on this view results button and this will open it up. Okay. So, yeah, so this actually did just return back the 100 the uh when you the 100 most profitable results so the question might be is is like oh did every combination out of those 200 combinations did every single one of those were each one of those profitable and the answer is not necessarily because when you run an optimization it only returns back 100 of the most profitable and that's what actually what we're looking at here but what we can do then of course is then we can sort on these numbers here so, for example, like if I sort just on the net profit, I can see that the highest profit uh, that the combination created was over 210 points. And to generate that, it traded eight times. It had five winners and three losers. And then the average profit to average loss was three and a half or 3.58. So what that means is that for every point that I lost on a losing trade, I made over three and a half points on a winning trade. And this number right here is actually really important. When you create or basically are working on a trading strategy, the idea is, is that if your average winning trade is substantially larger than your average losing trade, you can be wrong more often than you're right and make really good money with that trading strategy. And this is the thing that really kind of a lot of people need to kind of wrap their head around is, is that we're not going to be right all the time. There's just no way it's going to happen. So what we have to do is whatever we whatever type of trading strategy we need to work with, we want to shoot for our average winner to be substantially larger than our average loss. And again, it gives us that buffer, that wiggle room. So when we are wrong, you know, it doesn't hurt us that much on our trading account. So, because again, nobody's going to get away with, you know, a perfect track record to say the least. Now to take a look at the results, you'll see that the combination here that performed the best was five and 38, meaning that for a multiplier, it recommended that we use a five periods or a five period multiplier with a length of the ATR to be 38. And if we were to use that on this historical data set, it would have generated over 210 points. So let's go ahead and open that up and just take a closer look at it. So you'll see that the profit was 210 points. The buy and hold was 213 points. So what that means is that if I would have bought the SPY here five years ago and literally held on to it for that exact same period of time, I'd actually be up 213 points instead of 210. And I would have just held on to it for the whole time. The downfall to that thinking is that I had to be fully invested. I had my money completely wrapped up in that in that spy holding there for five years. I couldn't do anything else with it. But with this one here, <clears throat> excuse me, I actually generated 210 points over that same period. But how I did it is something we want to take a closer look at. And that is, for example, you can see that it traded eight total times. And out of those eight trades, five of them were winning. So five out of the eight were winning trades. That means three of them were losing trades. And then the average profit was over 50 and a half points. And the average loss was a little over 14 points. So this is that ratio here of that three to one right there, meaning that the average winner was or over three and a half times the size of the average loser. And so this is that ratio right here that I think is extremely important to take a look at. Now, another thing I like to look at here too in this report is down here under this auto market timing. 
this is telling you how much we were in or out of the market. In this case, we were out of the market 446 bars. So what does that mean? That means that if in a typical trading year, we have approximately 250 trading days in a year, that means we're out of the market almost two years of time. So that means that we generated 210 points in a little over three years, right? And, um, and in order, again, like I say, in order to generate the, uh, the 213 points, we had to be fully invested for the five years. So this is, again, like I say, something else that you want to take into consideration you know, with any type of trading strategy about how much you're actually going to be in or out of the market and so forth. Then the other thing I also like to really take a close look at here is the equity curve and see, you know, how did your account fare during that period of time? And what we're generally trying to find here is we're trying to find as smooth of a curve as possible going from the lower left to the upper right hand corner. And what we're trying to avoid, of course, are these kind of stair step down. That means that we're in some losing trades at that point that it was going against us, right? But that's, of course, what we were talking about earlier. And that is, if your average winner is substantially larger than your average loser, you can afford these kind of little stair steps as long as, like I say, those other numbers kind of hold up. Now, the other thing we could do, too, is we can click on this plot on chart here. And by doing that, this will actually plot the actual buy and sec sell signals directly on our chart. Now, by default, we've got our, um, our equity curve up here at the top. So since I've already seen that, I'll go ahead and close that window down. And then we'll go ahead and zoom in here. And we'll take a close look at some of these trades here. All right. So whenever you run a system test, you want to make sure that this thing is buying and selling where you really want it to be buying and selling. So as you can see, we've got some buy and sell signals, but they're kind of hard to see. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and double click on our candlesticks here, and I'm going to change them to a bar. And I'm also going to change the color of these bars to white. And then I'm going to click on OK and see what that looks like. OK, so that, that shows me the signals. It's a little bit clearer to see the signals now. Now, the next thing I need to do is I need to change the, the, very, um, the settings here on this indicator. So I'll go ahead and double click on it. And I'll change the number of periods of 38. And I'll change the multiplier to 5 to match up with what the system is. And we'll click on OK. And now you can see our indicators change quite a bit here. So what we're looking at here again, and let me kind of zoom in here just so we can really see this here. There we go. The idea here is, is that when the price closes above this upper line, you see that that's happened on this bar. One bar after that point is where we should be getting long, and that's this bar right here. So now to check that, if you hover directly over that, this will tell you that this was trade number eight there, and one unit was traded at a price of 439.23. Now the settings that we use for that is, if we get long, we should be getting long at the opening price. And if you hover over that bar and look at the opening price, you see that, that opening price is 439.23. So that's perfect. That's exactly what we're looking for. So then if we go back, let's look for for example, like a sell signal or some exit signal. So this is a this is an upward move here, and you can see that right here, this bar here traded below that low, and for that reason, you can see that right here that we got an exit, and again we got out trade number seven at a price of four thirty three thirty seven, and to check it again, take a look at that price bar, and you can see that that's four thirty three thirty seven. All right, so that's that's basically just on the spy and here's what i was basically trying to point out earlier again is that the the idea behind this is that this is a trend following system so when we can get into a trend and we have the settings working correctly again this can work really well for you and the nice thing about this is that you don't have to be fully invested all the time you can basically make sure that it's dialed into whatever you're trading and then you can set the parameters. And again, you can be in and out of the market depending on what's happening at that time. So then the other thing that maybe what you might want to do then is run something like this or these settings, for example, on other securities. Or you can run them on each one individually, whatever the case is. But let's go back into the system tester here. And you'll see that I've created also a second system test here, which is just called the Super Trend System Test by itself. Now, if you open this one up and go to the buy order, for example, this one, you can see that this one is spelled out a little clearer where it says the first item here is the multiplier and the second item is the length of the indicator itself. So if you want to try different 
parameters or different lengths of the indicators and multipliers, use this particular system test. Don't modify the optimized system test because that could, uh, um, anyway, I would just recommend that if you wanna make changes, make changes to this one here. Now, the other thing I always recommend too, is not to make changes to original formulas, but instead make a copy of them. So the way that you can do that is that if you right click directly on the system and click on copy, now we have a copied version of that exact same system. So let's go ahead and go into it. I'll go ahead and open it up. And then what I'll do is I'll just change these parameters to match up with what we had before, what we got in that system test. So the multiplier, for example, was five, and then the length was say, you know, 38. And let's say that we want to run these same parameters here on a bigger group of securities. So again, I'll, for the sell order, if I've got the buy order set at five and 38, I want to do the same thing for the sell order too. But again, you can experiment and try whatever type of settings you want. But I'll go ahead and set the multiplier to five and again, the length of it to 38. And now to go ahead and run this one, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and click on OK. I'll make sure that I've got the copied version selected. And then down here, for example, I'll just go ahead and run it on the S&P 100 and I'll run it over the same length of time. So I'll go ahead and start my system test. So this one now is gonna run on the S&P 100 securities there. And again, it's gonna go back over 1250 uh, records going backwards, so about five years of time here. So another question that you might have just real quick is why does the S&P 100 have 101 securities in it? Well, some securities have more than one class of class of uh, stock. So, for example, like Google has a class A and a class C, for example. So I just get that question every now and then. So in case you were wondering, that's the answer to that. So the other thing about this is the census is so customizable, too. In this case, what we're doing is we're only running like one set of parameters on all 100 securities. But depending on what you're trading, you might want to run just the parameters on one security at a time. So for example, maybe if you trade, maybe if you trade just NVIDIA or just trade Amazon, you know, you might want to zero in on that. But what I thought I might want to do is just kind of show you what it would look like on, on all 100 at one time. So we'll go ahead and click on view results, take a look at this and we'll sort on this and see what we've got here. Okay, so here you can see, for example, we'll go ahead and sort again on the net profit. We can see about three quarters of them tested profitably, about a quarter tested unprofitably. And then of course, then we can just start working our way down and take a closer look at them, like Broadcom, for example, start here, we'll go ahead and open this up. This one generated 878 points. Over that same period of time, it, it generated over 900 points. But if you were to trade this, you were to trade it five times, you'd have three winners and two losers. The average profit was 328 and the average loss was 52. So that's a really nice ratio there. And down here, you're out of the market, 391 bars, almost 400 bars there. So again, you weren't fully invested during that period of time. You know, take a quick look at the equity curve, a nice looking equity curve there. And then we can go back. And again, what I would do is I just kind of go down through each one, for example, and just take a look at them. Like NVIDIA, exactly the same, 576 for the buy and hold and for the profit. But again, if you're trading it, you were to trade it and had four winners and three losers. The average winner was a huge um, uh, ratio here. The average winner was 153 and the average loss was only 13 points. So that's a huge ratio. And then down here, the out of market timing was 450, 450 bars. But again, what you can do again, like I say, is just kind of go down through each one. And for Netflix, you can see that this fit Netflix actually pretty well. Uh, the profit on Netflix was over 450 points and the buy and hold was 205 points. Six total trades and all six winning all six trades were winning trades and let's take a look at the equity curve. oh actually let's scroll down here for a sec and we we're out of the market over 554 550 bars so 554 bars and the equity curve for that one again looks pretty good that is not bad at all and again each one closed out at a profit so this is you know again it's a super simple system <clears throat> these parameters that I just ran were the parameters that I found running it on the on the S&P 500 or the SPY, the ETF for the S&P 500. But again, if I was going to 
concentrate on just a handful of securities, I'd probably run those parameters on the individual securities one at a time to really kind of get it dialed in that way. All right. So to also help you out, um, let me kind of go back here for a second. Let's talk about some other ways to actually run this system test here too. Hold on for just one sec. One of the things that I found in the when doing research for this trading strategy is they talked about combining this with other indicators, saying that uh, maybe trying to figure out a way to see, you know, to only trade this when uh, when the security is actually trending more. So then the question is, is, well, how do you define a trend? Hands down, the most common way that I saw it done on the internet was actually combining it with a moving average. So if you want to try to do something like that, let me just show you how we could do it. It's really simple, actually. But we'll go to the buy order here, for example. And if you take a look at this last line right here, this is the last line here that actually is going to generate the, the, the actual signal for this trading strategy. And this is saying that the closing price is going to cross up above this indicator, which is called the STI indicator. And so when that happens, that's going to indicate a buy signal. And on the other side of the coin, when the sell signal, this is saying that when the closing price crosses down below the STI indicator, that's actually where it's going to exit out. So in order to go long, for example, to generate or basically follow it, you know, to only place a trade when you know it is quote unquote trending again the example that i saw was just combining it with a moving average so to do that all you can all you really have to do and that is add whatever type of uh, rule that you want to add to the system so in this example let's just say that i'm looking for this to be a buy signal when the closing price crosses up above that line right and the closing price is above its 200 period moving average and if both of those are true, that's where I want to get long. So this is where the formula language comes into play. And if you're newer to Metastock and so forth, of course, that's where I can help you out. We do a lot of training on the formula language. But if you want to write it for this particular example, the way that you could write it is just say that the close, for example, is greater than its moving average. And the way that you could write that is MOV for moving average, open parenthesis, the close, and I'll explain this as we kind of go, the number of periods, and then the type of moving average. So in other words, this is a this is the formula right here for a 200 period exponential moving average of the closing price. And what this last line is saying is saying when the close is greater or above that 200 period moving average. So now we have two different criteria here for the buy signal. And that is the price has to go above that blue line, number one, and number two, the close has to be above its 200 period moving average. So again, if you want to run it, you know, on one security, 100 securities, whatever the case may be, just go ahead and put in your symbol. I'll just go ahead and put in the SPY, for example, just kind of give you an idea. And we'll just go ahead and run this real quick. And we'll take a look at the results. And you can see how something like that, that would actually apply to it. In this case, it actually, the, the results actually dropped by quite a bit. And this is a really common thing that I see with system testing, for example. A lot of times people think like, oh man, if I could just add this one other thing, that's going to make all the difference. Or if I could figure out you know, this, uh, if I could add this trailing stop to it, man, that's going to, that's going to make all the difference on that and so forth. And again, in my experience over the years, what I've found is a lot of times, sometimes just the simplest strategies are the best strategies. And I've also found that to be true too, when talking to traders who have been trading for a long, long time. And I'm not talking about traders who've just been trading for a year or two. I'm talking about for years and years and have seen a lot of different types of markets. And more often than not, I'm really surprised at the simplicity of their trading strategies. They know exactly what their trading strategy is and they have faith behind it. And behind and because of that, they're able to follow it no matter actually what happens. And again, many times over, I have been very, very surprised again about how simple some of their strategies are. And so sometimes just keep the, the strategy simpler is sometimes better. And that's kind of what I found in this situation. So if you want to try different things like that, of course that you can, but that of course depends on your level of expertise here uh, with the formula language. But it is wide open and you can add 
whatever type of criteria you want, whether you know it has something to do with a MACD or a stochastic or whatever the case may be. Okay, so it'll be wide open there for you. Now, in addition to kind of help you out here, I've also created an exploration here. And I'll go ahead and do a search up here on LMS to get my formulas, oops, LMS to get my formulas together. And the formula I created here, <clears throat> excuse me, is a super trend exploration. It's a pretty simple strategy or um, exploration here. But what this is going to do is this is going to run a scan and the column A is going to come back with the, with the closing price of the security. Column B is going to come back with the day of the month. Column C is going to identify if we had a buy signal. And column D will identify if we have a sell signal. Now, if you want to make changes, for example, if you change, for example, the multipliers and the length, you've done your testing and you figured out you want to use something else, this is where you want to make those changes. And what I would highly, again, recommend is that rather than making changes to the original formula, just right click on it and make a copy of it and then work with the copied version. So I'll go under the buy order here and I'm going to change the multiplier, for example, to five and I'll change the length to 38. And then I'll do the same thing for the cell signal. So I'll go ahead and make the change to the multiplier of five and the length to 38. All right. Now to run it, we'll click on OK. And we'll go ahead and make sure that we have the correct one selected. So I'll choose that one. And then I'll, again, I'll just run it on the S&P 100 securities there and click on the start exploration. So what this is going to look for, it's going to look for any securities that are currently giving us a buy or sell signal up through uh, the most recent data that it can get. So this should actually run through pretty quickly. And if you have any types of questions, please don't hesitate to let me know. Just send me a message in the chat window. And I'll be happy to kind of go through here, uh, go through it with you as well, too. So we can go through uh, any type of questions that you have pertaining to this. All right. So Kevin, if you, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Jeff. FYI, you're getting uh, quite a number of questions. <laughs> oh, okay. Should we in stop question. and talk about some of them? I mean, if it's a good time, I don't know if you, um, I don't know if you can see them. If you open up the questions tab, you should be able to see them. Okay. Let me see here. And if not, I can read them to you. And if you want to do it later, we can do that too. Well, if you've got some pertaining yeah. to what I'm doing right now, for example, that might be good. Otherwise, I can always go back too. Okay. So, however you want to do it, it's fine. I think they're so they're not pertaining to right now. Oh, so okay. uh, we'll save them until a QA portion when you're ready. Just let okay. me know. All right, sounds good. So when you run this, here's a, another really good example here. Like when you run some of these scans, for example, that are really selective and you're not getting any, you know, they're not coming up with any results, for example. Then the question is like, oh, gosh, you know, is my exploration working correctly? You know, what's happening here? The quickest, easiest way to kind of answer something like that is turn off the filter, rerun your scan here. And what this will do is that if, you know, if everything is working correctly, then if you look at this rejected, you really shouldn't be getting much of anything rejected at that point. And then what we can do is I'll show you another way that we can go back through the results here. So go back. Okay. So here's what we've got now is we've got our securities. And what this is looking for is looking for any securities that have a one underneath the buy column or a one underneath the sell column. And if you click on the column headings, you'll see that there just aren't any signals there for that. So then the question is, well, what was maybe like the most recent signal, you know, on one of these companies. So what you can do is that if you select the company, then go over here to the right hand side and click on inspect. This is going to open up a report that you'll be able to go in and take a look at and see where some of the other signals were. And what you want to do is go back and you're looking underneath the buy and sell column here and you're looking for a one underneath either one of these. So for example, there's a one underneath the sell column here on January 23rd, and this is for 3M. So that's the most recent sell signal there. So if you wanna take a, take a look at that or see that plotted on the chart, then of course we could open up 3M like this, all right? We'll close this down, go ahead and close this down. All right, and then we'll go ahead and plot our indicator, all right? And we want to make sure and choose or basically make sure that the parameters are set the same. So I want to change the parameters to 38 and to 5. I think that's what we ran it on, right? And we want to merge it. 
There we go. So what this is doing now, this is actually saying that on this bar here, which again was on the 23rd, this was a sell signal at that time right there based off of those parameters. So that's what the exploration will do for you is it'll find these buy and sell signals based on whatever parameters you put in there. And if you want to go back and look at, pre at previous signals, that's what you do is go back and run it without the filter and then click on, click on the inspect button. And then you can go back and you can visually go and look for previous signals there. And then of course you can always then go and plot it then on your chart and see what those signals look like. Now, in addition to that, there's also an expert advisor that I created. And of course, to see that, we need to open up the expert advisor. We'll scroll down to the LMS formulas and find the super trend expert. And what you want to do here is open it up and you've got a buy, you're, you're going to have a buy signal and a sell signal. So we'll open up the buy signal. And what you want to do is just make sure that these numbers are the same with whatever you tested. So in this case, We've already got this set. I ran this earlier, but it, we have a multiplier of five and the length is 38 for the buy signal. Okay. And then for the sell signal, we do the same thing. We have a set settings of five and 38. Click on OK. And if you want to see it directly on your chart, make sure that you have it highlighted. Click on attach and then click on close. And then that'll plot your signals there on your chart. And if, again, if you have trouble seeing it here, like everything's green and red, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll just change this to, for example, like a bar chart, and then I'll make them both white. And it just really stands out that way, just so I can, that way I can see the signals a whole heck of a lot easier. So, so that'll come with it there too. So, you know, if you're interested in these formulas, just send me an email and I'll be happy to, to, to make sure that you get them there. So I really appreciate it. Um, all right. So I guess I, at this point, um, let me jump over, I guess, let me give you just a quick uh, overview of my website here and just show you what the type of training that we offer and so forth. And then we'll go to questions after that. So our website again is up at learnmetastock.com. And at Learn Math Sock, the only thing we do is really just try to help you out in a lot of different ways. And we and we can do it in, in a number of different ways. But if you open this up, primarily where the, the majority of our customers are, they either go to, for example, like live classes. We do up to three live classes per week. And once you become a member, you just go in and then you click on the join live class. And of course, join the class at that time. But the majority of, of most people, they spend their time inside the video library. And inside the video library, we have well over 100 different training videos in here now. And we can help you in a lot of different ways. And so the top section here is just getting started. And one of the things that I recommend most people uh, uh, most people get started with on the Learn Metasuck site is this section right here. And that is start off with, for example, like the introduction to part one, part two, the next step, and then after that, Metastock advanced. If you can get through those first four videos right there, what that's going to do, that's going to give you a really good foundation of the program. And from there, then we can jump around or you can jump around to any other, you know, category that you want. So, for example, like if you're interested in jumping over to like maybe the Explorer, click on the Explorer tab here. And you'll see we've got a number of different types of training available to you on the Explorer. I love the Explorer myself. I think it's it's so versatile, and the, what you can do with it is just absolutely amazing, to say the least. But I love that particular feature of the program. But again, you can zero in on any particular area that you want. If, for example, that um, if you need help with anything, too, just remember that you can always contact us directly. And with a lot of our training, for example, what we also do is we also do videos with, or I'm sorry, uh, quizzes with them as well. So if you want to take some of our quizzes that come with it, what you do is just go down the resources, click on quiz, and this will actually help reinforce, you know, what we taught during that particular video. So that might be of help to you as well to kind of get started. But Probably, as Jeff was saying earlier as well, one of the most um, uh, popular areas on the site is this section here called the trading strategies. And what we do here is we'll take trading strategies from, you know, published uh, articles and so forth. And we literally show you how to do that inside of Metastock. 
And then what we do in addition to that, of course, is we also include the formulas. So any of the formulas that we create, you'll be able to download them directly inside of your program by clicking on this button down here at the bottom of each one of those videos. So, you know, by doing that, I, I can save you a massive amount of time and effort to say the least. I've been doing this for a long, long time. And getting up to speed and writing formulas and trading strategies can take a lot of time. And I've already gone through all that for you. So, you know, just take advantage of it. The other nice thing on this site here, too, this is a new website that we just released not long ago, is that you can also do a search up here, too. So, for example, like, you know, if you want to do a search on a particular indicator like Bollinger, for example, you know, you can do a search on that and, and that'll show you the different videos that have to do with that and, and then go, go from there. So anyway, we've got a lot of different ways that we can help you and uh, I'd love to see you as a customer. All right. So with that being said, that's what I've got here for you today. And let me turn it back over to Jeff and let's talk about some of the questions that we might have. The first thing I want to say is I completely agree with you. I love the scanner. I use it every day. <laughs> so um, let's see, looking at some questions that we've got. Um, what is Kevin's email? I actually sent that one to the thing. It's admin at birdmetastock.com. Uh, Ed asked earlier, um, the default settings are three and seven for the trend indicator or the super trend indicator. Uh, right. Is there a rationale for using three and seven as a default? <laughs> that's a great question. I mean, that's just like the, the default or the, all the training that I went through. That was the most popular combination that I saw, you know? And so I don't think there's any perfect setting to say the least. And that's why I created that optimization test is so you can create whatever, or basically find the setting that really works for you. But um, there's a lot of training available, but most of them, well, the ones that I saw anyway, I came, <clears throat> excuse me, is uh, three and seven seem to be the most common. And so that's just why I put that in there. Okay. Um, those are some other questions that came in. I answered most of these, like what's the light, white line called? It was the super trend indicator. And uh, uh, another one is, uh, are there suggestions on where we can put a stop loss? Uh, that one came in from Bala. Oh, yeah. Well, that's a good, that's a really good question as well. So let me jump over here to the program here for a second. One thing that a lot of people tend to overlook is that in the system tester, for example, when you're doing a system test, you have this section here, which are called stops here. And there's five different types of stops here that you can test. Break even, maximum loss, profit, inactivity, minimum change, and also trailing stop. So each one of these actually requires a fair amount of explanation. So for that reason, I actually do have, um, I do have a video specifically just on this one page of the system tester that'll walk you through each one of those. So this is actually a, a really good area to kind of experiment yourself is to say, hey, what would happen with this trading strategy if I were to put in maybe like a 10% profit target or maybe like a 2% uh, maximum loss, for example. And that's exactly the kind of stuff that you can ask the system tester to do. Now, in addition to that, I've also have created a lot of different um, types of stops as well um, that you can download directly into your program. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, and tell a stop and chandelier stop chandelier. I've done some uh, chandelier stops. I've done fixed uh, ATR stops and so forth. And uh, this is that here on just the stops inside the system tester, but all of these you can download directly into your program that uh, that I've created that could actually help you out as well. So for example, like this, um, let's see, like this uh, using the fixed and ATR stops right here. Again, just open that up and click on this link right here. And this will download the formulas that I created uh, to help you out with the program there as well. But what, of course, what's really important is that you watch the corresponding video with it to make sure that you understand exactly how these stops work. So, so stops are, are very, very tricky. Maybe Jeff can even expound on this a little bit more, but in my, you know, in my searching and testing and everything else, I mean, you have to be, as I was saying before, sometimes just the simpler strategies really are sometimes the better strategies. So I don't know, would you agree with that, Jeff? Or what, what if you I kind of- with that completely. Um, one of the, uh, I, and I, you can look at this if you want to, 
Um, one of the stop strategies I like the best, um, I learned from Steve Bigelow, and he talked about a buying or closing out a position. If you're long, for example, if it closed below the eight period exponential moving average and um, take a look at it, if you like it, that's one of the strategies that I use to get out of a trade. And uh, maybe you like it. <laughs> no, <laughs> that's agree. great. Perfect. Uh, Perfect. I agree with you completely, though, Kevin. Uh, like the simpler, the, if I can understand it, I tend to trust it a little bit more. And I like the simple strategies and they seem to work best. So. Well, like you said, I mean, there's a perfect example. There's somebody like like Steve Bigelow who has been trading forever, right? And he's using a stop that's just saying that if the close goes below an eight-period exponential moving average, that's where he's going to get out. I mean, it doesn't get much simpler than that, right? So, and if you, like in this one, for example, like this uh, example that I gave you today, that would be another item that you could put into the formula that would be a really, really simple uh, addition that you could test as well. So, Brian wants to know if you can use this with commodities. Yeah, actually, you can use this with literally anything, whether it being, you know, Forex or commodities, ETFs, doesn't really make any difference because all it's really doing is looking at the prices themselves. So, absolutely, absolutely. And I would highly recommend that you, you know, do as much testing as you can on it, though, but you'll see exactly all it really is is just another indicator that's looking at the open, high, low, and close. So as long as you can get data on it, should be fine. Um, Bala says thank you for the question. You're <laughs> welcome. <laughs> and thanks for the answer. She she brought the question. We brought the answer. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Uh, so, all right, I, that's the end of the questions. Um, I think I want to, oh, yeah, we had set up a little bit of a special offer for new customers. Is that right? Oh, we did. We did. We did. Okay. I can talk a little bit more about that and how to do it. Um, okay. Kevin, I really appreciate your coming in and spending some time with us. It's always great to have you. And I'm going to take control now. Perfect. Thanks again, Jeff. All right. Good having you. All right. Let me go ahead and do this. Turn this on. I'll also do this real quick. And... I'm going to good measure. We'll do this. So as um, as Kevin was talking about, uh, Learn Metastock, actually just to kind of give you some idea of LearnMetastock.com, I love it. Um, I'm right now, I'm the sales manager here at Metastock. And um, anytime we bring in somebody new in sales, what we'll actually do is actually set them up with a Learn Metastock account because it does such a good job. One of the things I always talk about Metastock is Metastock is such a great tool. And it's a toolbox full of tools, actually. And so the better you understand how to use those tools, whether it's an indicator like the super trend indicator, or how to run scans, or how to write your own formula, or anything like that, the better you understand how to use that toolbox, the better it's going to work for you. And so that's why I love uh, learnmetastock.com. It also makes my job way easier. Um, as a sales manager to bring somebody up to speed with using Learn Metastock. So as part of a LearnMetastock.com subscription, subscription, <laughs> subscription, you get three live training classes per week. You'll get hundreds of meta, uh, instructional videos, including met basic videos, expert advisor videos, how to use the system tester videos, videos on stops. Uh, he showed you the site uh, and it looks great with the redesign, uh, but there's tons and tons of really, really good videos and the whole focus of those videos are going to help you get under uh, a good footing and really use Metastock better. So um, normally the price, um, the, oh, I almost forgot, but this is one of the things that I think is worth the price of admission alone. So I'm glad I have a slide to remind me. But as part of your subscription, you also, uh, Kevin very frequently will go in, like he did today, and he'll talk about an indicator and include Metastock code and scans and whatever it might be. And so part of your Learn Metastock subscription actually includes 21 complete systems. That's uh, nine different templates. It's a total of 62 different indicators, 14 expert advisors, 28 system tests, 13 explorations. So, you know, a lot of times people come in and they'll be interested in getting a system. And we do sell quite a bit of add-ons. But one of the things that you get as part of this is not only do you get 21 complete systems, you know, Kevin, that'll actually, he'll go through it. He'll explain it to you just like he did. And then he'll also provide you all the systems and tell you what his take is. And, uh, I, he, 
a lot of times he'll talk about what he likes about a system and maybe what might be negatives about a certain system. He just does a really, really good job with it. And this is all included as part of a subscription. So a subscription to learnmetastock.com is normally $99 per month. Um, if you've never used Learn Metastock before and you want to try it out, um, we have a special offer for you. If you pay $99 uh, for a month, uh, Kevin's going to kick in a second and a third month for free, which means it's like 33 bucks a month So uh, for the first three months. Obviously, after that, it goes to $99, but it's a great way to kind of get familiar with things. If you learn just a little bit, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be something that can, that can pay for itself. So to take advantage of that, you can go to metastock.com slash learn metastock uh, three for one. You can give us a call 800-882-3040 or you can go to metastock.com slash And I'd recommend you do it. As I said uh, before, every time we bring in a new sales rep, and I think even a support rep, they spend a lot of time on learnmetastock.com because it is so valuable. It's such a fast way for us to bring somebody up to speed on using Metastock. So give it a go. Metastock.com slash Learn Metastock 3 for 1, 800-882-3040 or Metastock.com slash sales chat. So thanks for watching the video. I hope you learned the super trend indicator. It was good to see you. Uh, you look amazing today. If you're watching us on YouTube, hit like, hit subscribe. It helps a great deal. Right now we're trying to get up to 70,000 subscribers and we appreciate one more. So. Uh, Without all being said, stay healthy, stay safe, stay well. See you at the next one. Hi, Kelly Clement here from Metastock. Before you go, I have two quick things for you. One, thanks for joining us today. We love having you here at our webinars and viewing our videos. So what I'd like to invite you to do before you go is like and subscribe. Like the video, subscribe to the channel. It helps us a great deal and it helps us bring you more awesome content like today's video. The second thing is we have a great ebook on trading that you can get for free. If you go to metastock.com slash YouTube book, you can get a free copy of The Secrets of Successful Traders. It's a great book with lots of content from traders just like yourself who can teach you some of the secrets that they have learned. Thanks for taking a second with me and learning about those two things. Thanks for joining us and keep on trading.